place. Say the national breast screening program is the most effective in the world. And although they're considering improvements, perhaps screening older women over 65, they see this program as a success story they'd like to see copied for other diseases. The kinds of things that are, are likely to be on the agenda over the next one or two years are things like colorectal cancer screening, uh, Down syndrome screening, some more antenatal uh, type uh, screening, all of which we hope will be a real benefit to the public. But we're a little bit away from that yet, but we're getting there. They want to avoid the mistakes that have troubled screening with the smear test for cervical cancer. Any new screening test must be proved to detect the disease and doctors should be able to offer treatment. Otherwise, patients are needlessly worried. They think screening for bowel cancer meets these criteria. Instead of things drifting in as they used to do in the past, because screening can do more harm than good if it's not properly done, we really want to get it right this time. So we're taking the research now, probably recommending pilot schemes, and then learning from that experience, setting up a system that's as beautifully run as a Japanese car factory in terms of quality assurance. Decisions still have to be made, but the medical experts here at the Department of Health are clearly in favor of setting up at least one center to try out screening for bowel cancer, the second commonest cancer among men. They're convinced it could detect the cancer early and reduce the death rate. Lawrence McGinty, ITN, at the Department of Health. Now, some of the day's other news, and first, more than 50 people have died of yes, killers, bowel cancer is being considered by the government. Pilot studies are likely to get underway next year, and screening will be offered to men and women between 50 and 69. Bowel cancer is the second most common cancer in men and the third most common in women. Bowel cancer kills nearly 20,000 people each year, more than any other except lung cancer. But often by the time people present to their doctor with problems, it's too late to help them. So the government is considering a national screening program. Colon cancer is a very common cancer. There is some evidence that if you pick it up early, you can detect it early and therefore uh, increase the lifespan of the individual with bowel cancer, and that would be a very good thing to do. So we're in the process of discussing that right now. National screening is already in place to detect breast cancer. This is done at hospital, but the screening for bowel cancer would be carried out at home by the patient. They will be offered the chance to have a test of a stool sample, a fecal sample, and it's like a special toilet paper. Um, that sample, when it's dried, is sent to a testing centre, and it looks for what we call occult blood, hidden blood. It doesn't look red blood. You can't spot it, so that's why it's a screening test. Those people that have a positive test then go on for further investigations. But that further investigation an internal bowel examination is not without risk and in rare cases can prove fatal if the colon is ruptured. There are some major hurdles to overcome before the government will commit itself to the biggest cancer prevention program since the introduction of national breast screening 10 years ago. But if the pilot studies are successful, then national bowel cancer screening could just be a few years away. Fergus Walsh, BBC News, at the Department of Health. The first prosecution for a breach... The suspects who agreed to be tested were found to have taken illegal drugs. Most have been arrested for property crimes. Offenders were tested in five areas across England. The results show more than six out of ten suspects who agreed to be tested proved positive for at least one illegal drug. Nearly half had used cannabis. 18% tested positive for heroin and other opiates, and one in ten had taken cocaine or crack. Officials say they can now tentatively conclude that a third of all property crime is drugs related and they put the annual cost of victims at two and a half billion pounds or more. But the researcher who carried out the study says it also indicates a worrying comparison with the USA. Our research found that about um, two thirds of arrestees tested positive for at least one drug which is about equivalent to what's been found in the United States. Uh, but in particular, our research found that one in five arrestees tested positive for heroin or other opiates, which is in fact much higher than is found on average in the United States. The government has responded by reiterating its plans to introduce compulsory drug testing and treatment for offenders who steal to fund their drug habit. Depressing though the figures are, uh, what they do confirm is that the way we're dealing with it, by targeting crime, 
and drug misuse as an ur urgent priority has proven to be right and hopefully through the drug treatment and testing order we'll now start to get a grip on this very serious problem. This is the first research of its kind in the UK and it reveals that the extent of the link between drugs and crime is even greater than had been thought. Home Office ministers can now be in no doubt that a major key to cutting crime is getting offenders off drugs. Jane Peel, BBC News at the Home Office. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says... An entire country. Hundreds of mourners came to pay their respects to Angelina, who was shot dead by a white farmer who saw her being carried across his land. But this was not just an emotionally charged event, it was intensely political too. Nelson Mandela's ex-wife Winnie is looking for a distinctive message and seemed to find it today in a barbed reference to Mr Mandela's dream of a rainbow nation. There is in fact no black in the rainbow. Maybe there is no rainbow nation after all. The church overflowed and mourners were left to their songs and their thoughts outside. I'm feeling so sad just because it's uh, our black future. I want to condemn this accident in a strongest term because it's developing to other townships, to other uh, farmers that young people are going to be killed. I'm always a parent and next time maybe my child will be just like this today. The funeral ended after some speakers called for unity in South Africa, but one said the era of reconciliation was over. The killing of Angelina is being treated as a defining moment here, a moment for black South Africans to confront the inequalities which still undermine their lives, and a moment for them to press for change to move faster. Jeremy Vine, BBC News, Benoni in South Africa. England's chances of World Cup glory could rest in...